I want to remind us of something that Jesus had spoken. This is something that we had heard not too long ago. Two weeks ago, I preached on this message. It was from Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Jesus says these words as we remember when he's walking in the wilderness. He's been fasting for some time and the devil comes to tempt him and he says these words. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Two weeks ago, we were preparing to fast, and it was a time when we were learning about how to rebuke the enemy when he comes against you, how to even rebuke your own flesh, understanding that it's not just by bread that we live, and we focused on that. However, this week when I was talking to my wonderful wife, she pointed something amazing out to me, that Jesus' uh, answer to the devil in that moment relied on one important fact, it was the fact that he completely and fully trusted in the provision of God that he was able to rebuke the enemy and not take his offer. If Jesus had not trusted fully that God would provide for him, that God would speak over him, that God was the one who was taking care of him even in that moment of fasting and temptation, if he had not trusted God in that instance, he would have not been able to uh, rebuke the enemy. He would not be able to defend himself against the enemy because he would not have a source, a provision for himself. But his ultimate trust and provision, uh, trust in the provision of God is what was able to, uh, what, what gave him the strength and the power to overcome the enemy in that moment. And so today, my challenge or my question for you, what I want us to go through this morning is do you trust in the provision of God every single day. My challenge for you is do you trust in God's provision day after day? What is provision? Maybe you're wondering. Provision means that your needs are being taken care of by him. What you are in need of is getting taken care of by him. And when you trust in his provision, that means you are trusting that he will take care of your needs. And so when we ask ourselves, do I trust in his provision? Is that how I walk every single day? Do I trust in his provision? Do I trust in what he has provided for me? It's almost a follow-up or, or continuation of what Paul spoke about last week as we remember, right? We remember that we in our obedience, we see God's abundance. When we are obedient, we see that God provides abundantly for us. But then my follow-up question for you is, do you continue to trust in God even when there isn't abundance? Now, that's a hard question. Do you continue to trust in God even when the abundance is not immediately available to you? You don't see it right away. You don't experience it in that very moment. Do you continue to walk faithfully one step after the other after God, trusting in his provision, believing for his abundance and obeying his will, but trusting in the next step? Knowing that he can provide much more than you imagine, but knowing that sometimes that takes time. God's promises sometimes take a certain amount of time of faithfulness, and are you willing to be obedient in your step every single day? As we remember, as we heard even this morning about Abraham, he was willing and trusting in God even though he received a promise from God. But he was obedient and trusted in God's provision to the point where he would walk in the wilderness for such a long time, knowing that God would continue to provide. My question is, do you trust in God's provision for today, for tomorrow, for next week? Sometimes it's so easy for us to see the miracle in our life. Right? As we remember last week, the sermon that Peter sees the miracle. He sees as Jesus performs this amazing feat. They go out into the waters and they receive so much fish. It's a, such a great catch that their own boat is getting swamped. It's easy to see the miracle and then all of a sudden forget it the next day. And not, allow, not trust in God for that day. Forgetting what God just did yesterday. Not trusting in him. You know, it's one thing to see that, but then Peter would have to walk with Jesus every single day as a disciple. And even Jesus himself is the one who said that he, 
The foxes have holes and the birds have uh, nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. One day you see a miracle of a multitude of fish and the next day you're walking after someone who's saying, hey, we're not gonna, I don't know, we're gonna sleep tonight. But walking after Jesus, something that the disciples must have had to learn is trusting in the provision of God because that's how Jesus operated every single day. The way that Jesus operated is that he would continuously trust in the provision of his Father. No matter where he was going, he knew that God was going to continue to provide for him. And he was trusting in the leading of the Spirit in his life. He walked entirely in the provision of his Father. My challenge this morning is that what happens when there's no abundance? Will you trust in his provision? What happens when your resources change? Right now, you might have sufficient or enough, more than enough. But what happens when your resources change? Will you still continue to trust in the one who is the ultimate provider? When your resources change, will you continue to trust in the one who is the ultimate source? When your circumstance change, I want you to understand something. Even though your circumstance have changed, he does not change. Even though your situation might be different tomorrow, he will stay the same. And so it's up to us to have a trust in him, knowing that he is the one who has tomorrow in his hands. Continue to trust in his faithfulness. Maybe the ground underneath you right now, it feels unfaithful. The ground underneath you right now feels unstable. It feels shaken. Here's a word for you this morning is that he remains faithful. He does not change. He does not shake. He does not stumble. He does not waver. He is remaining faithful to you this morning and tomorrow. And the day after that, he will remain the same. And so we have to build this trust in him knowing that he will take care. His provision will be for us every single day. Every single day, walking day in and day out with him. That your God, no matter what the ground underneath you feels like, your God is your firm foundation. He is the solid rock upon which you should build your life. Every single day, he is faithful. So quickly, we can forget that miracle that God did in our life. And we forget to trust him in our day to day. This is, uh, we can see this very example with the lives of the disciples. They're, they're such a good example to us because oftentimes we act just like them. There's a moment in their lives when Jesus was with his disciples and they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, the same sea where they saw the miracle of the multitude of fish. And they're crossing over and all of a sudden one of them or some of them, they forgot to bring bread with them. You know, the poor planning or something, they forgot. So they crossed over and, and Jesus begins to teach them and he says, listen, beware of the leaven of the Sadducees and of the Pharisees. Beware of this. He's teaching them an incredible spiritual truth to be aware of their false teaching. And all of a sudden when he says this, they're like, oh man, we forgot the bread. Jesus is talking about leaven. We have to cook some bread or something. What's going on? I can only imagine they're probably blaming one another like, hey, Peter, did you get the bread? No, you didn't get the bread. John, were you supposed to get it? No, no, John didn't grab it. Judas, Judas like, we don't have enough money for bread. <laughs> Jesus is teaching them something super deep, but they're so concerned with the day-to-day. -day. They're like, where's the bread? They're standing with the one who's the bread of life, and they're thinking about where is the bread? Oh, but how often do we do the same thing? How often do we get so caught up in what's going on in our every single day and we forget that he is the one who provided our, our breath, our life. He is the one that we can turn to and trust in him. And Jesus responds in such an amazing and powerful way. I mean, Lord, forgive us if we get rebuked like this. But Jesus, aware of this, said, oh, you of little faith. Is that, is that word to us? Oh, you of little faith? How big is our faith this morning? We can have enough faith for a mighty miracle, but then we don't have enough faith for every single day. 
where it's every single day that God wants to spend time and live with us. He wants us to trust in him in the day to day, not when tragedy strikes. He wants us to trust him daily. He says, oh, you of little faith. Why are you discussing amongst yourself the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that it is, I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus is telling them, like, did you forget what you just saw, what you just witnessed? Just over the water when we were, where we were leaving from, there was 5,000 and earlier 4,000, and we fed them with just a couple loaves of bread. And here you are so worried about the fact that you forgot bread that you're missing the deep theological point that I'm trying to teach you for you guys to be aware because you are supposed to be go, going out and be sent to proclaim my kingdom. And you are the ones who are gonna establish the church here on this earth. And I want you to be aware of the hypocrisy of those religious leaders of that day and age. But you're so caught up on the earthly things that you're not seeing the heavenly things that I'm trying to teach you. How often are we so caught up in the things of this world that we miss the point of what God has called us to do here in this life? So caught up and so worried and so anxious that we forget and we even forget the mighty miracle and the mighty work that God just did recently in our lives. We can witness the miracle, but then we don't have enough faith for the miracle in our own lives every single day. We allow anxiety to consume us. We let stress to overcome us. We're worried about making ends meet. Did you forget what he did? You know, he healed your body. Maybe you have a testimony. He healed your body from death itself. Do you not believe that he can heal your daughter from her fever? He got you into that home that you've been dreaming about, that miracle that you happened for your family. Do you not believe that he can help you make the payments every single month? Sometimes we let these things consume us so much. Even, even myself, I notice it in me where, where I'm, so, I'm thinking about finances, I'm thinking about this. And, I, and there's moments when I'm supposed to be praying and I'm spending my quiet time in the, with the Lord. And all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh man, I got to make that I got to make that payment. I got to get that check and I got to do this and I got to do that. And, and all of a sudden, I don't even hear the voice of the Lord because I'm so consumed by the things of this world. I'm so consumed with this earthly bread that I'm not feeding from the heavenly bread that is being offered to me. And do we trust? The, the solution to this is to trust in his provision. To trust in him daily. To walk with him daily. To trust that he can provide. He redeemed you from your outer darkness. Do you not believe that he can redeem you from your daily temptation? You don't have to continue to fight on your own. You don't have to continue to fight those lustful thoughts. You don't have to continue to fight those dark and evil thoughts. You don't have to continue to fight your depression, anxiety on your own. He is able to redeem you daily. It's not just at the moment when you ran to the altar, accepted Jesus as your savior, but every single day he wants to be with you and provide for you. You see, God is not just the God of mighty miracles, although that's something that encourages us. But sometimes we see mighty miracles in the lives of others. But our God is the Father who is in heaven who gives us this day our daily bread. We can get focused and, 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 and you know, entrapped and encaptured by the mighty miracles of God and, and be so encouraged by them. But what I want us to learn is that he is the provider day in and day out. He is the one who gives us our daily bread. This is what Jesus taught us to pray, our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, turn to him. Give us this day our daily bread. He is the provider. He is the one who gives us our provision. He's the one who takes care of us. Trust in him. When you trust in him, your trust in him will begin to reveal his daily provision for your life. When you begin to walk and trust in him, he will begin to reveal how he is continuously providing for you every single day. Jesus reminds us in chapter 6 of Matthew, he says these words, therefore I tell you, this is verse 25, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not, is not life more than food in the body, more than clothing. 
Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet the heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you being anxious can add a single hour to the span of his life? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? I wonder why Jesus would continuously say that. But I think it's because oftentimes we are those of little faith. We don't have enough faith for tomorrow. We think it's up to us to take it upon ourselves to figure all things out. But unfortunately, we can't figure all things out. And he is the one who's saying, I will take care of your every need. Amen. Trust in me. Jesus invites you into a life without anxiety, a life with no worries. This is not a hippie Jesus. Telling you, oh, life is no worries. <laughs> you know, he's not a warthog and a little, what was that guy? Meerkat. No worries. He's inviting you to a life of no worries. Why? Because he reminds you that you have a father in heaven who takes such precious care of his children. He knows you deeply and intimately. That even the hair on your head is accounted for. And he loves you so much, he sees you and he takes care of you. Do not be anxious. You do not need to be anxious. What good is it to be anxious? Oftentimes we get anxious about things that we can't control, right? It's, it's just things that are out of, our, out of our control. And Jesus is saying this profound thing, what's the good of that? If it's not in your control, then why are you adding mental effort towards it? By being anxious, will you add an extra hour to your life? No, it's not in your control. You can't do it. And so he says, do not be anxious, but rather turn to the Father, the one who takes care of the lilies and the birds. He takes care of you because you're so much more valuable to him than they are. Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. Do not worry. Why not? You know, sometimes we worry about what tomorrow has. And there's nothing that we can do what tomorrow, about what tomorrow brings. No matter how hard you try, no ma matter how much effort you put into it, there's simply nothing you can do what tomorrow will be like. Tomorrow is unknown to us, but it is known to our Father. Rather than worrying about tomorrow, trust in the one who holds your tomorrow. Why not allow his holy presence to fill your heart and give you a peace that is beyond understanding? It's an unreasonable kind of peace, almost illogical kind of peace, beyond understanding kind of peace. Yes, tomorrow is full of its troubles. Yes, tomorrow might have the doctor's report, it might have the bank statement, it might have the job interview, it might have the final exam, it might have that moment with your family member that you're worried about, but none of those things are bigger than your father. None of those things are greater than your father. Your dad in heaven has it in his control. Let him, let him give you peace. Let his peace fill you. Let it surpass your own understanding. Let it surpass the understanding of the people around you. When you're facing what tomorrow is going to bring, let his peace be an indicator of his presence for the people around you. Where they ask, how can you have peace in this moment? Why? Because my father's got it in control. My dad in heaven, he's going to take care of it. And I trust him. I trust that he will provide for tomorrow. He provides each and every day, day by day. And you will see that. And you'll be amazed. If you involve God in your daily needs, you'll begin to see his mighty hand in your daily life. If you involve God in your daily needs, you will begin to see his mighty hand in your daily life. Because sometimes we allow ourselves to think that we're in control, we're taking care of things every single day. And then, and then, you, know, and then you wonder, why do I not see God at work in my life? Well, he's at work in your life every single day. 
Sometimes you misattribute it. You say, oh, it was just luck or a coincidence or, or it was just how clever I was or the wisdom that I had. No, it's God working. He's working your life every single day. And when you begin to bring your needs to him, he will begin to show his power and his glory in your life. He'll begin to show how good he is to you and how he takes care of your needs. All you have to do is turn to him. When you allow that space for him to flex his muscles in your life and you begin to see, dang, my dad is strong and he can take care of me and my needs every single day. He is my provider. When you allow God to take care of your daily needs, he will begin to take care and show you his glory every single day. It was him. Every single day it was him. He takes care of us. And Jesus, when he was speaking these words, he concludes with this statement. This is what I want to encourage us in this morning. To take away from, from this message is to live like this. Jesus says this, Matthew 6, the, the, verse, the final verses of that chapter, verse 33, he says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things, all those things, the clothing, the food, all your worries and anxieties, all these things will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first his righteousness. Seek first to live for his kingdom. And you will see as everything else comes and falls into place. When you seek him first, you see how he is your provider day after day and day after day. When you seek him first, you see how he takes care of every single one of your needs. Seek first his kingdom. Jesus invites you into his kingdoms. And he makes you a promise that all these things will be taken care of. Sometimes we let the enemy convince us that we don't have time to live for the kingdom. Right? We have to take care of all of our needs because we're the provider. But Jesus is saying, no, let him be the one who provides and live for the kingdom. We think because we need to provide for our families, we need to take care of the bills. We have got nine to fives or six to twos and we got other gigs on Saturdays. We have to take care of these things. But Jesus is saying, let him be the one who provides. Live for the kingdom. Live for the kingdom. What if you started trusting in his provision? Today, what if you started trusting in his provision, started living for his kingdom first? Not everything else needs to get taken care of. My Monday through Friday taken care of. My Saturday with the family taken care of. My Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11, 15-ish taken care of. And then I can live for the kingdom for maybe two to three, and then I gotta go with my other family. But Jesus is saying, what if you start living for the kingdom first? What if that's your Monday priority and your Tuesday priority? What if you wake up and spend time with him and at workplace you're talking about him and where you're going, you're, you're, you're living for him and all of a sudden you begin to see how God provides in every single moment that your daily needs are taken care of. Our Father in heaven providing us his daily bread. Our father is a good father and he's generous. He will take care of his children. He will take care of his children. I can share personally from my life. Maybe I don't live for his kingdom every single day, but I would love to and I try to. But the beautiful thing is that when you live for his kingdom, you see how more and more is added to you of all the things that you're worried about. How he takes care of your needs. Before Christina and I got married, we made a decision. We wanted to go on mission trips. We wanted to go and preach the gospel out into the nations. We wanted to do this. And we made a commitment. We said, hey, let's, let's do this. Let's live this kind of lifestyle. It's a difficult lifestyle, but we were going to do it. We're, we're planning on doing it. And it's been so amazing to see how God has mightily worked in our lives every single time. Every single time we've planned something and, and everything seems to fall into place in such a wonderful, beautiful way. People out of nowhere just coming up to us and saying, hey, I just want to bless your family. Like, this is not for the mission trip. This is for you and your family. I want to bless you. And they would give significant sums. And we'd be like, wow, I'm going to be off of work for three weeks, but you've just taken care of all their bills. And in the way that in, even in the workplace, like, it's, it's so awesome that my bosses and, and my coworkers are just able to take care of the needs and the, the things that need to be done while I'm gone. And they're so willing. They're saying, hey, look, go for it. Go, you can be gone, we'll take care of things. Sometimes I come back, it's a little messy, but it's okay. 
God takes care and he provides when you trust in him and you begin to live for his kingdom. And it's not even just like these super spiritual things like mission trips, but he takes care of your day in today. Your daily needs, even this last year was so amazing. God really blessed us. When we first got married, we got to move into a house where it's my boss. He, was, he owned a house, so he rented it out to us. Very fair price. He took care of us. That was, in its own way, a provision from God. But this last year, he decided to sell the house, so he let us know far in advance. He said, hey, I'm selling the house. You know, maybe look for other arrangements. And we're like, okay, we gotta look around. He sells the house, and the new owner says, hey, would you be willing to continue living in that place for up until January? Like, okay, sure, like, why not? He's like, same everything, same structure, same price, everything. Like, okay. And, uh, you know, during this time before my boss sold the house and up until, you know, even after, we were just praying, God, please, you know, take care of our needs and provide. Maybe we need somewhere to live. You know, we really don't want to live in this area. We'd love to live closer to the church. We'd love to live closer to family. Lord, please provide. And, and God bless, you know, we were praying for a boss to sell the house for a good price. Even we're just like, Lord, bless him. And then all of a sudden, right, so up until January, and my buddy, my co um, I mean, my business partner, he's telling me, like, like a few months back, he's like, hey, actually, s situation changed. I, I'm gonna, we're going to be moving out of our house. We're going to be moving into a different place, and uh, we're going to probably move out around January. Do you want to come live in our house? We'll rent it to you. Fair price. And I'm just like, Lord, I didn't even have to look around. She's like, all of a sudden, he's like, okay, from one place to the other, here it is. It's in the every single day, the day-to-day -day of your life. When you trust in God, he provides for you. And of course, I could have said, oh, just a coincidence. Just so happened to be. No, it's not a coincidence. God is providing. When you ask him, when you bring your needs to him, he shows his glory and his power. He will take care of you and your needs. So the challenge this morning, do you trust God to be your provider? Do you trust in his provision every single day? Do you walk in that? Will you walk in that? Will you allow him to provide for you? Here's the word of God. Philippians chapter 4, 19, it says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God. My God will supply every need. Why? Because our God is not a God of poverty. He's not a poor God. He's a rich God and he has enough to provide for you. Because of what Jesus Christ did. Because he has brought us into his family. We are his children. As we prepare our hearts for worship right now, I want our worship to turn into trust. I want our worship to turn into trust that when we begin to worship him, when we begin to magnify him, the words that we say, we allow it to become trust in our hearts for us to trust him in every single day. Not to trust him for 25 minutes while we're worshiping on a Sunday, but to trust him tomorrow. To trust that he has enough to provide for me tomorrow. To trust him with my circumstance, my situation for tomorrow. To trust in everything that he has and what he has given. To trust him in this year. Maybe you'd be walking through the shadow of the valley of death. The valley of the shadow of death, sorry. Or maybe you're going to be in the green pastures. No matter what it is, to continue to trust in him and know that he is the shepherd that leads you. The path that you might walk through might change, but your shepherd remains the same. And it's him who takes care of your every need. His rod and his staff will comfort you. He leads you. You may stand right now. Let your worship begin to turn into trust. Let him lead you. Let his provision be over you. Trust in him in every step. And maybe today, maybe today you feel lost. Maybe you feel like you can't handle every single day. Maybe today you're hearing this message for the first time, a message of a father who loves you. Loves you so much that he would want to take care of every single one of your needs. Well, let me tell you something. That this father loved you to the point that he would send his son to this earth. 
in order for him to die a death that you and I deserved, in order for each one of us to be able to turn away from our sins, turn away from the ways that we are walking away from him and turn towards him and walk after him to make him Lord and Savior of our lives. This is the first time you're hearing this message. I want you to receive Christ today and say, Lord, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And I want to trust you and follow after you every single day. And maybe today as well, you're, you're feeling as though you've been overburdened with everything that you have and, and your day to day and, and, and you've been so anxious and so stressed and, and life is just becoming overwhelming to you. Allow him to take all of that. Give it into his hands. 